Oh, Richard, hello. So, Richard's from the virtual space. I've been having fantastic tech trouble today. Um, Richard developed a whole VR school during this COVID period that he's going to share with us. I have been using Richard's VR goggles for a while in school. So these, this is why or how I met Richard. The first ones that he made were the cardboard ones, and those were just incredible. And now he has these plastic ones, and today he's taken the VR even further. So Richard, I am super excited to hear what you're going to share with us today. Thank you for being here. That's my pleasure. Thank you, Karen. So I'm going to disappear and you're going to chat. Hi, everyone. As um, Karen said, I'm Richard McAdam from the virtual space. And um, I, well, I was told that, um, that using a PowerPoint style presentation is probably not the best route here. So I've decided to just go with some notes and give you a bit of uh, background on what it is I do, how I got here, and um, you know where where we're heading from here. Um, the virtual space is a virtual reality company. That's what we do. We build virtual reality equipment and we build virtual reality software. Um, this started many years ago when I uh, I had an interest in three D technologies like laser holography, lenticular 3D, this sort of thing. Um, since I was very young, I've had an interest in these things. And um, virtual reality came along and made this sort of thing possible. Um, so in 2014, Google launched the Google Cardboard. And the Google Cardboard uses your phone um, to create a VR headset. Now, if you're not familiar with it, I have a sample here. This is a Google Cardboard and you simply open it up, flip it open, assemble it, and you have a VR headset made out of cardboard. Um, Google has actually, to a large extent, um, abandoned this project. Uh, what they've done is they've open sourced it. They've open sourced the um, the system, the cardboard system, and um, they they're not really investing very heavily in VR at this point. But they did a lot before they uh, pulled out. So, in educational terms, things that you can do with cardboard and other phone-based headsets include Google Expeditions, um, Google Street View, sites in VR. Um, now. Street View can be used uh, to travel around the world, but it's got a problem. And the problem is that you basically have to depend on the kids to, uh, to guide themselves. Um, there's no remote control sort of uh, scenario that the teacher can control the experience. Um, expeditions, expeditions addresses that issue. Uh, expeditions lets the teacher control the experience for the kids. Um, I can show you briefly on the phone here, what an example of what expeditions is about okay so oops sorry let me just open expeditions okay so this is google expeditions and i will open one of these expeditions and oh, let's go to a bit more of a colorful cell here um there we go and you can see this is an example of the sort of content that you get in expeditions. Now, at the top, you'll see there's a little icon of a Google Cardboard. When you tap on that, it goes into Cardboard mode, and you can insert it in a VR headset, and you can, um, you can view this in three dimensions in virtual reality. Um, there's over a thousand expeditions for VR. There's also AR expeditions, but AR is not really my um, field of interest. I'm more interested in virtual reality. Um, and those expeditions have been created by many different people. And um, as of about a year ago, uh, Google added the ability to create your own expeditions, publish them and distribute them to teachers. 
Now, there are a couple of disadvantages to this platform. Uh, the first disadvantage is that it's still panoramas. Um, there's many reasons for that, but the bottom line is that there's no movement in the panorama. There's just points of interest that you can highlight and you can, uh, you can guide where people, where the students look in the panorama. The second um, issue that wasn't an issue until COVID came along is that this is designed to be used on a local area network within a class. In other words, the teacher is standing with the students and the students are experiencing this VR experience and the teacher is using a tablet um, by hand to, to work on the experience and select things and so on um, and to guide the student's experience to facilitate what they see. Um, so in 2016, the first six degree of freedom VR system was launched. Now, that was the HTC Vive and I have one over here. And clunky as it is, um, it's an amazing experience because it tracks your movement as well as your rotation. That's what six degrees means. So as you move around in the virtual world, left and right, forward and back, um, you're, you are, you are tracked and the virtual world adjusts accordingly so that it feels as though you are in a full three-dimensional stereoscopic world where um, you can see uh, around and under things, you can step around things, that sort of thing. In addition to that, with six degree systems, you get controllers like this. And these controllers give you hands in the virtual world so that you can now pick things up, you can interact with them, you can do stuff with them, and that lets you um, write much more engaging virtual worlds in software. These, these virtual worlds have to be written based on game engines. Um, you, there's, there's broad different classes of virtual, uh, virtual reality experience. Um, the ones that Expeditions uses, a lot of them are 360 degrees or 360 degree stereoscopic photos as taken with a camera like this. Now, although this gives a quite convincing view of that space, um, it doesn't let you move around in there. The technology is moving forward to the point where you can move around in a photograph, um, but that is not a simple thing to create, whereas a 360 degree panorama is actually quite simple to create. So Google Expeditions and related uh, platforms are designed around the idea of a single viewpoint panorama where you don't move around, you're just statically positioned, or in the case of a video, you're moving where the camera moved, but you're not able to move freely. Um, anyway, getting back to the Six Degrees uh, platforms of HTC Vive and so on, um, I quickly bought two of these systems, and at the beginning of, to end of 2016, beginning of 2017, I opened up um, a VR arcade called the Imaginarium in, in Melville. Um, and I ran this VR arcade for nine months. Uh, simultaneously, I was doing various events, um, renting out the machines and giving people VR experiences. Uh, this taught me a huge amount about what makes an engaging and exciting VR experience. Uh, one of the most popular experiences we used was Richie's plank, where you walk out on a plank 80 stories above the ground. Um, people absolutely freak out about this because it really gives you vertigo. Uh, and what this showed me is that an important element of engagement is to try and get people to have an adrenaline rush. Another important element is to make them forget they're in a virtual world, and six degree systems really help with that. Well, it, it created problems because one of the things um, that would happen was uh, people would smack my controllers into the wall of the space because they'd forget they were in a VR world. I had a guy at the RAND show in 20, uh, 2017, he leaned on a virtual table and fell on the ground. I had another guy, he, um, he was in an underwater experience and he got so scared he screamed, tore off the headset and ran away. Um, anyway, so these six degrees experiences are what, um, what 
what are most engaging in VR? That is the type of experience where you forget that you're in a virtual world and accept it. And when you forget you're in a virtual world, that is known as immersion or presence. And it's the goal of VR. It's one of the most important things. Um, I'll get back to that in a few minutes. But right now, um, I want to just show you the VR glasses that uh, Karen was showing us. These glasses were the product that I created um, in 2018 to replace my cardboards. Um, we still manufacture cardboards, but I'd really rather not because there's a lot of problems with manufacturing cardboards. They, it's not good engineering. They, uh, they tend to be inaccurate. There's a lot of problems with, at the factories. If it rains, the, it gets humid. You can't run the, the cutting pattern. There's a lot of manufacturing issues. Now, with these, most of those issues are gone. So we can actually offer these at an equivalent or cheaper price because although the parts are more expensive, the manufacturing is cheaper. It's the same thing. You, you basically, um, you've got a touchpad on the top, which acts as a trigger so that you can interact with your VR experience. Um, you put your phone in like that, like that. And you have VR happening inside there. Um, and this is very affordable VR. This is, uh, it requires a reasonably capable phone. It, specifically, it requires a phone with a gyroscope. Um, and uh, there are other gotchas, but mainly um, that is the big thing, is that the phone's got to have a gyroscope. But of course, the better the phone, the better the experience, because the faster the graphics, the better the frame rate. One thing you don't want in VR is you don't want jerkiness and dropped frames. And um, as soon as you get that, it starts, it starts making you feel queasy. Um, so a good phone is definitely a good, uh, a good option there. Anyway, I had got these, um, these headsets into production for a year. And then, of course, along came COVID-19, which completely destroyed my event rental business. And um, during the lockdown, I spent the entire time creating a product called VR Schools. Okay, so VR Schools. VR Schools is a virtual reality classroom. The teacher requires a six degree system like this. Okay, like, like the HTC Vive. Um, it's been designed around uh, Steam VR and Open VR, which is HTC Vive, uh, because, well, basically because Facebook controls Oculus with an iron grip and, um, and they're not an open platform at all, and I believe in open platforms. Um, the, the teacher requires a six degree system, but the students can go in with either with anything from a cardboard upwards in terms of VR, they can join a class, or they can um, go in using a PC running running the VR app, uh, but using a screen and a mouse um, and a keyboard, um, like with a normal uh, first-person shooter game or something, um, or they can go in through a web browser um, on a PC. And then they don't even have to install any software. They just open the relevant page and they can join the class. Um, so, you know, the question becomes, why is virtual reality of value in education? Well, there's two things that make VR a unique medium. The first thing is it's immersive. It's a place you go, not a screen you look at. It's, you are in that classroom. The second thing is, it's got a very, very short learning curve um, before the teacher can start teaching. Uh, I'll get into the functionality of, of VR schools shortly, but um, the bottom line is that really 10, 15 minutes, and even a teacher that's not particularly computer literate can be teaching in much the same way that they would teach in a normal physical classroom. There are other reasons that, um, that VR is of value. Uh, one of those reasons is um, that it extends a teacher's reach in much the same way that something like Zoom or Teams does. Um, it engages students. Students love VR. Kids love VR. It's, it's the next step in gaming. So they get, they get engaged just by the fact that it's VR. Um, Another reason is you can simulate resources. 
you can, in VR, you can simulate things like laboratories or workshops um, or outer space. And, you know, the, you can simulate all sorts of different environments. Um, and, of course, it can run on multiple platforms. So although VR is what makes it immersive, you can attend without actually having the VR uh, technology at your disposal. Um, I just want to cover some of the uses of VR in, in education, okay? Virtual classrooms is the one that I'm addressing, and that is because I'm trying to create a, um, a platform that has got universal applicability, that can be used very widely. Uh, per, our transformative purpose in the virtual space is Educate Africa with VR. And in order to do that, we need something that is accessible. Um, and of course, you know, phones are very widespread. There's over 300 million smartphones in Africa, according to the last figures I saw. Um, and that is a lot of smartphones. Now, admittedly, only maybe a third to half of those are capable of doing VR. But even the ones that aren't, I'm planning on porting VR schools to that and letting them use what they call magic window mode, which is what you saw on expeditions now when you swipe your finger and that lets you um, lets you move around and and change the um, perspective of the student. So students will be able to join on a cheap smartphone using magic window mode or on a very basic smartphone by streaming a YouTube video, which can also be streamed out of the virtual classroom. Other things you can use uh, VR for in education. You can do tours and experiences of whatever, the Eiffel Tower, nuclear power plant, whatever. You can do hands-on training sims. For that, you need a high-end VR system. But then you can have the person go into a virtual um, environment and interact with that environment as though it is the physical environment. They can drive a train, they can fly an airplane, they can uh, manage a nuclear power plant. Okay? And then the, the fourth um, thing that you can use it for is um, you can do new art, science, and engineering. Okay, um, for example, Google created a VR app for HTC Vive called Tilt Brush, which is an entirely new artistic medium that has never existed before. You paint in three dimensions in a virtual space with uh, brushes that consist of glowing lines or animated rainbows, all sorts of different things. Um, that type of medium has never existed before. And there's numerous examples of this that I'm not going to get into any depth with right now. Um, okay, to get on to VR schools, um, Joel, if you could play the video now, please. Virtual reality classrooms. Teach as you would in a physical classroom. Easy. Learn the basics in less than 15 minutes. Use the whiteboard to illustrate concepts. VR Schools supports slideshows. Up to 15 students in a class. Interact with students. Students can join from anywhere over the internet. Only one full virtual reality system is needed for the teacher. Students use affordable smartphone VR glasses. VR schools. Classrooms in Virtual Reality. Thank you, Joel. Um, just to wrap up, I'm going to just cover two things that I would like to implement in the future in VR schools. Um, the one is I'd like to implement video streams within the platform so that the teacher effectively has a video projector at their disposal 
um, a virtual video projector that can project whatever they have on the screen of their computer in the virtual classroom. Um, the other thing that I would like to implement, but this requires uh, 3D artists and it, it requires resources, is um, basically magic school bus type adventures where the teacher hits a button, all the kids get morphed onto the back of a dragonfly and they fly out, out to the space station or through the human body um, on, you know, the uh, grand adventure or down to the bottom of the ocean and the teacher has got interactivity at their disposal where they can highlight a shark and, you know, um, have it go transparent and show internal organs or whatever, that sort of thing. Um, I've got many examples of that type of technology, but none of them designed with um, with the ability of a teacher to take a class through that experience. Um, and that's pretty much my presentation. I, uh, I would like to field any questions or, you know, have anybody who's interested, please contact me at vrschools.co.za. Zaida, um, the... The training, as I say, is very quick. It's more about setting up the initial system. We currently, we at a at an early stage with the software. I'm about to do. I'm involved with um, Un University of Johannesburg uh, with education using VR for education in engineering. Um, we've done a project over the last year and a half to two years, um, and we're now looking at doing a study with Roosevelt High School. Um, of actually running classes and trying to measure the effectiveness. Uh, once you've got the VR system in place, then the training is 15 minutes and you can start holding classes. It's that quick. Are we out of time, Karen? We've, we've got a few more minutes, but I just think what you've done is really, really interesting and can really change the way we work with the children, especially with um, classes where the teachers are now having to often balance between having half the kids at home and half the children at school, they could actually be doing the same thing at the same time instead of this repeat. And teachers are really getting tired because they're finding they're almost developing two separate lessons um, along the way. So this could be really useful. Um, on that note, I think a, an easier solution may be to just set up a camera in the classroom and just stream it to the kids that aren't there. Uh, just because with VR, the problem is that you have to either be in VR or out of it. There's no half measures. You, you've got to wear this headset. And until you've got headsets that you can look through, <laughs> you're going to, that's how it's going to be. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> we'll probably uh, get there soon. But thank I've you so much for sharing. That. Sorry, Say I've that again? About that, about um, setting up streaming for their classrooms. I've had actually inquiries about it. Anyway, sorry, Joe. Yeah, so Richard could help you with that too, in terms of how do you actually engage. So for me, it's just how do we think differently about the space that we're in? And how do we use the technology to help us and not see it as a hindrance? So even with my hassles today, you can still make things work. And um, it's how do we use technology effectively, not just a plaster on top, but really meaningfully in our lessons. So, Richard, thank you. I'm so excited that you shared this and your VR um, school really looks exciting. So, thank you.